this video is going to be on how do we integrate artifacts or how do we use artifacts while performing code commit and a code build uh, to begin with we need to have some prerequisites in uh, in place for example we need to have a repository uh, I've got one here which is my web page which has a certain bundle of scripts YAML files then I've got a HTML page to uh, test upon now to begin with what exactly is an artifact so artifact is something that you want to store as you know part of your build process for example uh, if you have chosen the uh, runtime environment as as Java you may need some jar files to be stored at the end of uh, the code build so that later on when the docker containers are uh, are vanished uh, you would need those files to be present at certain locations for example a s3 bucket uh, so in order for us to do so we'll have to introduce artifacts in a, in a yaml file so let me just quickly go to the build spec dot yaml um, i can edit this and uh, scroll down here now before i make a change i just wanted to uh, let you know that how exactly an artifact is introduced so for example um, an artifact is uh, it could be introduced uh, in the later sections as you can see here uh, we do have phases like install pre-build build and post build what we can do is we can add an artifact right after this one so and again i'll just let you know which document am I following currently so uh, here we go let me just make sure that all the alignment is fine and they, there it is all right before I commit anything let me just quickly take you to the documents that I'm referring to this is a um, Amazon KB article which basically um, you know lets you practice uh, more uh, about the uh, build spec files and how do we create it how do we add multiple phases and uh, uh, you know multiple things that we can leverage during a code build so in order for us to introduce the artifact we can do uh, we can add a section called artifacts now there's something called files a subsection of artifacts where we can simply either we can name something for example let's say we can just add a quote saying that index.html so uh, after the build phase is performed uh, we'll still have this particular file which is index.html uh, to be saved at a certain place let's say at s3 bucket however in this case i've just added a wildcard character to make sure that everything within everything should be um, stored at s3 um, i'm not going to use the uh, the name per se because we already have a relevant name um, all right so let me see how do we refer um, an S3 bucket for that matter. So let me first of all commit this change after adding the artifacts. Uh, I'll just name it author as A and uh, A at uh, example.com. Call it A.com as well to be uh, for the testing purposes basically. You can add a relevant com commit message, for example, added artifacts and then can commit the changes. Uh, once the changes are committed there you go you can go back to the code build now basically I already had a code build project um, so in, in that code build I am looking for um, the, the, the code builder is basically looking for a word called successful um, based on the build spec uh, .yaml that I have provided um, so let's now do one thing let me point the artifacts to go to s3 so let me edit this and go to artifact section now you see it says artifact one primary and the type well there's none apart from the s3 so let me select s3 now do we have a bucket we don't have it so let me try and go here just put an s3 and uh, let me open s3 in a separate window once the S3 is there you go it's right here we can create a bucket you can call it um, CICD commands and DevOps 
um, let this all be um, created with the with the default settings we can create a bucket and uh, here we go also um, let me just go back to make sure that we are on the right side there you go now if I do a reload now since the bucket has been created if I do a reload now and uh, select s3 there you go that's your uh, bucket now you see another option which is basically the name uh, if you don't provide a name it basically defaults to the project name well that's pretty fine I, I would say now you do have the uh, namespace type here that's an optional section you can actually select a build ID so for example what happens every time you build uh, or create a build what happens is it will be generating a build ID uh, more as a as a directory and all the files that you're trying to uh, you know save as an artifact gets uh, saved under this particular path which basically uh, you know uh, differentiates between multiple files being downloaded or being saved at s3 which is actually a good practice to do so in a real-time environment so let's select a build ID here now in order for us to save certain uh, bandwidth and uh, to make the uh, uh, to make better utilization of the space on s3 let's select zip here so all the contents will be zipped um, another one it says disabled art artifact encryption we can simply you know keep this disabled that's totally fine but what we can do is we can en enable the encryption at the s3 level to make sure that um, the encryption is intact throughout the artifact uh, you know uh, when the artifact is being uploaded to the uh, s3 bucket um, another good thing to notice is that it says service load permissions now in order for you uh, in order for the AWS code build to save anything on S3 it needs permission so this check here basically says that you know okay you have the permission to modify the service role so it can be used on this particular build project and we would definitely need these so let's go ahead and uh, click on update artifacts And there you go. Um, this is pretty much it. Now, what we can do is we can see what happens if if we click on start build. It just takes a while to uh, to commit through all the stages. As you can see, it says in progress. Um, there is a way to look at the live logs. If you can click on build logs and go to tail logs here, you will see that the entire um, a log line in process also you can see the current phase through which the uh, log is currently going through once this is done you can actually see the entire log um, along with the environment variables and uh, you know the entire process of what exactly happened there you go it says download source failed now let's see why um, let me just close this Uh, it says invalid phase name YAML file error invalid build spec phase name let's go back and see what's happening there so as you can see it has been added under the phases which it is not supposed to phase will include only these three so let me just quickly edit this this is supposed to be a a subsequent section of of the phases so what we can do is you can simply take it out um, here similarly these can be moved here and there it is let's see if that actually helps us just save it as a and call it a at a dot com come with the changes so we need to be very sure about the uh, how exactly the file is going to be aligned because that pretty much changes the entire um, build process okay we do have this committed now let's try and uh, retry the build and see if that works for us again we do have all the information available here it says in progress if you want to go back you can simply go ahead and tail logs and see what's happening 
So you see it's currently says provisioning which means the docker container that um, it has created in the background it's getting provisioned and later on it is going to download the source or basically download the files from the code commit repository uh, to act upon based on the build spec yaml file that we have uh, provided and the steps mentioned uh, within the file so just waiting for this to be completed it's almost done so it's finalizing last one will be completed let's see what happened uh, close and it's a success so yeah congratulations we do have a file now uh, let's see what happened at, at, uh, at S3 in the meantime um, I'm sorry where's the S3 hmm uh, okay so let's just find out open it up in a new tab let's see what do we have here CICD DevOps with the bucket name and there you go we do have uh, a file here which is my web app code build and if I go inside here you will see that we can enable the bucket versioning that's a separate thing altogether but uh, we do have the uh, the files ready let me just go back and look out for the uh, for the file so we do have the the code build file available now and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so yeah thank you so much for listening any questions please drop in the comments anything if you did not understand please make sure to add it as a comment and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thank you